Ok, otro minuto más. Voy a poner un conteo. Vamos a ver qué va a ser del futuro de Destiny Bandita. A la verdad, esta emoción le pone los mamones. A ver. Ah, esto sí estoy emocionado, eh. Está saladino, ¿eh? Así que viene algo grande. Los gusanos, sí. Like in the darkness. Witch Queen and Caesar Smarty. is chapter one and the beginning of the end for the light and darkness saga. We're really, really getting to the core of what it means to be a hey. guardian. We are looking at and asking big questions about the light and darkness. We have a big bad that we've been anticipating for a really long time coming back in the in the form of Savathun. Savathun's had a hand in most of the major conflicts that we've been involved with. We've heard about Sabathian for years and just bits and pieces, and then like you see it slowly. Va a ser un desmadre esa vieja, eh? Until we come to this huge critical point. Sabathian's no longer just someone you hear about. She's not just interfering in little ways. She's now ready to take center stage. Sight. One, two, three. Sabathian, she's larger than life. We wanted to make her feel imposing and very regal and dancing through motion in some way. Light offers us a fresh start. She's very manipulative. She is very ethereal, but she also has like that creepiness to her as well. She promised she'd help us out with this pyramid ship problem that's coming our way. But the reality of the situation is Sabathun is only on Sabathun's side. We've outlived our purpose, and it is to Sabathun's benefit to wipe us off that chessboard. She's lived among us. She has played us for fools. She knows us inside and out. And she's been a step ahead of us, like, the whole way. So how do you beat someone like that? It isn't too late. You can still be forgiven. Be careful. I'll, I'll hold, hold you, you to it. it. In order to beat Sabathu, you need to understand... Yeah, lo habíamos visto. ¿Eso va a ser una nueva locación o qué? Bueno, va a ser la nave, supongo. Supongo que va a ser como una corazado 2.0, como en Oryx. Eh, totalmente. Se ve muy bien. Alla Witch Queen campaign, I think, is probably the most ambitious campaign we've made in a very long time. Okay. We're building the definitively Destiny campaign, so leaning into the journey, you can find in exotic missions or uh, the mechanics. Ya promete la la campaña, eh? You have to kind of think your way through. You have to figure out, like, hey, what do I need to do next in order to get to the end of this? We've got Savathun, right? The Queen of Lies. So this campaign is full of surprises. 
Sabathin okay. has all these abilities, and you got to make sure that all of the abilities of the bosses would be something worthy of her. And as I kept thinking about this, you know, I felt like I was really becoming Sabathin. We've also added the legendary difficulty, which is called Become Legend. It's not for the faint of heart. It's going to be loaded with these moments that are going to be frustrating, almost like teeth gnashing. But when you get through those encounters, you're going to feel like really accomplished. Double rewards, yeah. As people who have worked on raids and dungeons before, being able to broaden that experience for any kind of player who comes in is really important. If the Witch Queen is the psychic detective fantasy and journey, then Season of the Risen is that same detective throwing on their flak jacket and defending Earth from the Hive Guardians and the Lucent Hive and Sabathun herself. Bueno, ya lo van a dar más protagonismo ese güey. Muy bueno, lo tienen muy abandonado. You want us to hit them. I need us to hit them. She's got this light suppressing technology that the Cabal were using in season of the Chosen, and now she's going to help us use that against the Lucent Hive. When you work at all, she has a different approach. O sea, vamos otra vez a ser amigos de los Cabal. We don't really understand what happened when Savathun actually was able to take the light. And so the campaign in Season of the Risen in many ways is about that story. Guardians need to stop Savathun's advance beyond the throne world. And Savathun poses an existential threat to everyone because she basically has an undead army. In fighting the Lucent Brood, this isn't our first time in the game fighting other light bearers, but it is the first time that we'll be facing other light bearers that have much more relentless motives. When you look at these Hive Guardians and when they do their abilities, you immediately make that connection like, oh, they are using my powers against me. As soon as we see the <laughs> <that's laughs> <that's laughs> super. And it has two shields. You immediately are like, "Oh yeah, I see that connection." And then it's like, <laughs> and then you're like, it hits you with those things, and then you're you're dead. And it's just a, an amazing experience. The guardians themselves kind of feel like a fire team that you're fighting against. You got every class represented. The acolyte, when that character casts, does very similar thing as the player. Like the arc wizard, the sparks go out. It's ready to go. If you're not smart about it, if you're not paying attention, you are essentially going to have to play that fight over again. If you are successful in taking down one of these hive units that are wielding the light, you actually have to go up and kill their ghosts. That was like one okay, of the things that we were able to do in this game is just that moment where you crush the ghost. It's kind of this moral dilemma. A ghost is your companion, and now suddenly. You have one in your hand, and you're about to crush it. The first time that happens, you're like looking at your hand, like I can't believe what I've just done. Am I doing this? Should I be doing this? I have a ghost. Yeah, like, exactly. What, what, what is, is going this going on? Going on? <laughs> 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 I don't think I'm gonna lose. Brood are the most dangerous enemies we've faced so far, and so we're gonna need better, more powerful weapons. Sobre todo de los cuchillos, me gustó mucho. We did a bunch of work early on, looking at various different. Types of weapons we could add to the sandbox. We wanted to introduce a special weapon archetype that was effective more at a middle range, but also had these kind of additional roles associated with it. The glaive is a projectile weapon, and it is a shield, and it's a melee weapon. We wanted to keep that experience in first person. It has an immediacy that you don't really get when you're using a sword because the camera is so much further back. Because this is also a projectile weapon with a slower moving projectile, the onus of skill on aiming these weapons is about leading and compensating for the speed of the projectile and anticipating that. No se ve muy poderosa, eh. Difficult encounter and one of your teammates dies somewhere out in the open where you normally wouldn't be able to get to them. You can bring that shield up and actually get the revive and then fall back. Okay. Glaives originate with Savathun trying to steal an extremely powerful weapon for her own use, and players will use the weapon crafting recipes that they find throughout the campaign in order to reconstruct this incredibly powerful and incredibly ancient weapon. Okay, the crafting. You get in the campaign. You just get a taste that that's what you want to do for the rest of the weapons that you get. Weapon crafting 
lets you target a specific role and go and build that, and you know how long it's going to take you to get there, and you get exactly the thing that you want. I really want to see what people do with it, and like the feedback that we're going to get, and people sharing all of the things that they're doing with that new system. You're creating your guardian, and you want to be able to shape your guardian into what you want them to be. And this gives us a great opportunity to continue to do that. This is a, a really big season for weapons in particular. We've got eight brand new exotics. The Osteo Striga exotic submachine gun. This is something which Guardians have made, but it's modeled after Weapons of Sorrow, like Thorn and Touch of Malice. Fires swarms okay. of tiny homing projectiles that land on a target and then explode. <coughs> we have an exotic machine gun where the whole idea is be the Colossus. You can launch a barrage of up to 20 homing missiles. It's a comical amount of projectiles on the screen. We're doing Como una bobina. For each class this time, and the exotic perks tie deeply into the mechanics of the classes. We think they're going to be really cool additions to build crafting. Okay, va a haber elementales. O sea, va a ser como en el uno. Arco solar y vacío. Por lo que vi, ¿verdad? Por lo que entendí va a ser un, una combinación de pozo de curación y, y daño. Ah, ándale. Ah, ándale. Eso era lo que esperaba. Espero si la hayan mejorado muy bien. My favorite aspect is probably Child of the Old Gods. As this warlock controlling space and time, I'm able to rip a hole into another dimension and then pull out this little like sentient black hole. Whenever I target an enemy, my little black hole buddy is going to fly over there and start draining their life force. The Void 3.0 update is really setting the stage for how we're thinking about updating subclasses for the rest of the year. We're going to extend this philosophy to solar and arc. Solar obviously is going to be about burning, but there's this other component to solar, and that's healing. Arc, arc is all about changing. It's all about lightning, direct attacks, quickness. We're going to take the fantasies that you know and love today. We're going to embellish them. So what you'll see is like all of the new abilities, all the new actions you take, reinforce that to the core. Pretty f excited about it. La neta yo también compadre, se ve más vistoso, básicamente lo mismo pero vistoso, más animado mejor dicho. Que traían en la mano un gusano. Se ve mamalona, ve. From the drone world to the campaign to the customizable build crafting, it all comes together to make Destiny feel really new and fresh. We've got more Destiny coming this year than any other year before. It's one of the most ambitious releases we've ever put together, and the team is firing on all cylinders. Tell me, Guardian, what do you think you're going to do? Dos del 22. Pronto, bandita, pronto. Y ya mamó. La neta. Se ve muy interesante. Muy interesante. Sabía que iba a estar bueno. Pero... Al menos ya, ya quedó visto 
Que mínimo la campaña va a estar buena. Si no lo dijeron, espero y no me desilusionen con eso. Así que nada, bandita. Espero que les haya gustado el video. Y los estaré viendo hoy por Twitch a las 5 de la tarde hora México.